I have an actual copy of the Nag Hammadi Library that I bought at Hobby Lobby. They just had them scrolls lying all about. That's right next deal. to the Iraqi artifacts. The first thing we're going to talk about is the Monad. Now, the Monad is God or the One. God is the high source of the Pleroma, which is the totality of God's powers. The term comes from Pythagoras and Pythagoreans, who termed the first thing the Monad, the second the Dyad, and so forth. And in coming episodes, we're going to be discussing the Pythagorean cult. Now, the next thing we're going to be talking about is the Pleroma, the Pleroma being the center of divine life. It is the place of divine life that is made up of spiritual beings whose life is much like the angels and where they reside and beings like aeons and archons live. The lowest regions of the Pleroma are closest to the darkness, which happens to be our mortal realm. The one thing you guys have to understand is our mortal shells are a hindrance in Gnosticism. They are a corruption. They are a wickedness. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, emanation, and that is the supreme light of consciousness that descends through a series of stages, gradations, worlds, or hypostasis. Hypostasis? Wait, let me make sure it's right. Hypostasis. Hypostasis. Yeah, yeah. Eventually becoming more material and embodied in time, it will return to the one or the monad. Aeon. These are various emanations of the superior god or monad. Barbello is the first such example of an aeon. Now, this is not to be confused with the term eon, meaning an age. Just to let you guys know. Sophia. This refers to the lowest emanation of God. Sophia is also Greek for wisdom. She also identifies with the anemia mundi, or the world soul. She is also the one who birthed the Demiurge. Yeah, about now, the Demiurge is the entity ignorant of God and or opposed to it. Other names the Demiurge goes by are the Ariman, El, Satan, and oddly enough, Yahweh. And we'll get to that here in a second. The Demiurge created the physical universe and the physical aspect of humanity. The Demiurge also created a group of beings known as Archons, to preside over the material realm and present obstacles to the soul to keep it from ascending. Gnosticism relies on the concept of treating the physical body like it is a negative, and so one looks to escape from it. Finally, Archons. Archons are essentially servants of the Demiurge, and the group known as Ophites position the existence of their master's corruption, and there is essentially seven main archons beginning with Ayata Bayoth who then go on to create six others, Ayo Sabaoth, Adanios Elaios Astafanos, and Horaios so these act as the Demiurge's underlings, if you will, much like uh, Semyaza and the Fallen Ones that were under him to get into our topics tonight, first we're going to discuss what I believe to be a very interesting aspect of Gnosticism, and that is dualism. Now, in Gnosticism, the concept of dualism refers to the notion that the world was divided into the material and then the spiritual realm. The created world that we live in, or matter itself, is evil. Now, Gnostics actually split God into two separate entities. So what we see in the Old and New Testament in Christianity is this. The God of the Old Testament is a vengeful, wrathful God. It's played out in many different scenarios from wiping out entire civilizations, kingdoms, kings. Like what you heard? Well, head on over to our YouTube channel to learn about more uncanny things such as Gnosticism and hear more episodes of This Uncanny Earth. As always, why be boring when you can be uncanny?